So all of the markets in Wuhan are undergoing this kind of renovation. How many markets are there in Wuhan? 425 all over Wuhan. 39 in this district alone. What happens to those who sell vegetable or want to buy vegetable? What do they do? 第一方面是那个有大型的商超如中中北超市房供这个集中购买第二部分由部分的小生鲜店提供第三部分由网上的和线上的那个电商平台提供 so some supermarkets are selling vegetables or some smaller dealers but and then there is also a big part which goes online. Let's go to the meat sector. This was the counter, okay. So these were they prepared. How did you ensure sanitation in the past? So, so in the past, the storage were in the back, and here where they were selling. So, I just Okay, so first they would change the sewage system so that uh, the um, the sewage from the counters from the, the wastewater will be separated from the rain water. So after the renovation, he says everything will be traceable. There will be a code, a QR code for every piece of meat, where it came from, uh, where it goes. so so after the renovation, they will have double doors separating the, the uh, counter part and the storage part. In the past, there was only one door. Uh, that will prevent like flies or rats from going into the storage place, and people will be required to wear uniform to keep themselves clean. This was where fish was 
这边是卖的 so over there will be a will be a corner for scaling and slaughtering, uh, killing the fish. How do you make sure that the display area and the working area are not uh, cross contempt, you know, contaminated? Okay. So there will be a glass. Screen. You can see whether it is the fish that you bought. The whole process. The whole process of processing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 總共的這個改造大概多少錢? About total。Two uh-huh. floors, 20 million yuan, so that will be 3 million US dollars, over 3 million US dollars. So how do you implement stricter ban on illegal wildlife trade and illegal wildlife consumption?商品进货管理 why so, so people can bargain, and this is something that they, which makes them feel that they have, they are in control of the situation of what they buy. Mm-hmm. So it's a, also a one-stop shop where you can get everything. You know, here from everything you need for your kitchen. So basically, the idea is to improve regulation and sanitation without taking away the fun, the culture of visiting a local produce market. So it's not the same thing as going shopping in a supermarket. They want to keep it original, um, down to earth, what people know, what people like to come. That was my colleague Liu Xing in Wuhan, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk to her and our expert on the controversies surrounding the fresh produce markets in Wuhan. Don't go away. Making sense of the overwhelming wave of information means cutting through the noise to shine a light on the heart of the story and making room for new perspectives. True understanding means the ability to see events from more than one side. I'm Li Xin, and this is The Point. Now, the so-called wet markets of Wuhan made global headlines after being identified as a possible point of origin for the COVID-19 pandemic. What exactly is a Chinese wet market? What's their state of affairs now that the city of Wuhan has reopened? And who better to talk to on these issues and more than my colleague Liu Xing, who has been reporting across Wuhan. And joining me now, we also have Peter J. Lee, Associate Professor of East Asian Politics at the University of Houston downtown. Welcome to both of you. But first, 
China's foreign ministry spokesperson Geng Shuang has responded to U.S. calls for China to shut down all of its wildlife wet markets in China. Let's take a listen. First, I need to clarify that there is no wildlife weight market in China. In fact, weight markets is a foreign notion for the Chinese people. Instead, we have farmers markets and seafood markets where meat, vegetables, seafood and other fresh produce are sold. A very small number of them sell live poultry. Such markets are commonplace existence not only in China, but also in many southeastern Asian countries and a lot of developing countries. They form an important part of people's everyday life. There is no prohibition on opening or operating such markets in international law. Shin, I want to go to you first. I understand there is a slight delay between you and me, uh, Wuhan and Beijing right now. Um, the city of Wuhan uh, recently underwent a major overhaul and renovation of their fresh produce markets, as your stories have told, uh, upgrading over 400 farmers markets. But many people in the West question the timing of all this, saying that if the origin of the virus is still unknown, as Beijing and the science community insisted, why would China overhaul and upgrade uh, these markets right now? Yeah, well, I not only toured uh, fresh produce markets, I also talked to doctors, especially the doctor who sounded the alarm of uh, the first few known cases and reported cases of COVID-19. And she told me her first three patients had nothing to do with seafood markets. But the later patients, the fourth one, for instance, was someone who was selling frozen meat in the Huanan seafood market. Therefore, although there is no established evidence that the, the virus exactly came from any seafood market in Wuhan, there seems to be a connection, direct or indirect, of uh, some people who are working in these markets to COVID-19. So I think, I believe, in terms of uh, protecting people's health and uh, in terms of uh, keeping vigilant of any potential safety or health risks and uh, also just um, you know to prevent anything from uh, uh, posing any risk in the future I think that's why the city of Wuhan has decided to have an overall comprehensive overhaul of all 425 markets here in Wuhan uh, I tour these markets of course I know them very well I grew up uh, living going to these markets although in the last two decades or so since I've been living in a big city I stopped going to these fresh markets but more to supermarkets it is true when I go to these markets the memories come back but you do see places where sanitation conditions could be improved for instance where live fish could be slaughtered on site and that's definitely not very hygienic either for the environment and uh, it's not a nice thing to look at either so I think there is indeed room for improvement for these markets and also uh, as I said as as you have seen in the picture in the video some of the um, selling conditions for instance for meat between the storage and the counter there was only one door obviously something more could be done there so I think in order to be vigilant in order to act on the side of caution and after such a um, major epidemic I think the people the government of uh, Wuhan has decided that uh, they need to invest and it's a huge investment uh, a lot of people's livelihood have been affected by that as you have seen many people depend on these markets for their livelihood they have been working there for a lifetime a lot of people have also been going there for their daily needs you know everything they needed for their kitchen is a one-stop shop so it will be a lot of investment a lot of work but uh, I guess in the, in, the, in the sense of being responsible for people's health, the uh, authorities have decided to take in this major step. Well, Shin, I also want to set the record straight here. Uh, you have been exploring the city of Wuhan and uh, visited quite a number of these uh, Chinese fresh produce markets. Is it fair to equate all of these Chinese uh, fresh produce farmers market with the wet markets referred to by the U.S. and the West?
Let's not get tangled up in the definition game, whether it is wet market. I use that term because that's the term most relatable for a lot of international audience. But actually, it's more like a bazaar. But it's something very Chinese, you know, because you not just get meat there. You get everything. There is rice, there is cooking oil, there are spices, fresh vegetable, seafood. By the way, I didn't see anything such as wildlife that was being traded, being transported, nothing like that. I asked about live poultry, nothing was being sold there either. So um, it's a, a unique Chinese thing. There's not really an exact equivalent in a Western vocabulary. But I think you have to distinguish between two things. One is to improve the safety and regulation of these markets for the health of, and safety of the Chinese people. The other is to demand a permanent shutdown of uh, these markets um, by a Western politician. I think there is room to improve, definitely, but it is also um, not necessary to stop a way of life, to stop a tradition. If you can improve on it, it can be, ke it can be kept. Basically, it's not just China, it's also in many other parts of Southeast Asia where these markets are actually a tourist attraction. P this is where people feel they are at home, they're comfortable. This has been part of their lives. So if we can build on this, why not? Sure. I still remember um, often when I was a kid, uh, my grandma would take me to one of those fresh produce markets. People do not necessarily go there to buy stuff, but rather to take a stroll around, you know, chat with your neighbors, catch up. Uh, it's a community, right? It's a sense of community uh, that these markets um, give you. Peter, I want to go to you. How do you, right. how would you describe to our Western viewers and our viewers around the world the concept of the Chinese wet markets? Are they the same as what the Western world has imagined? I heard you say there is a considerable misperception about uh, uh, live uh, stock market in China. Um, you know, what has been shut down since uh, January 23rd when Wuhan was locked down uh, were the uh, wildlife uh, markets in China. And these wildlife markets uh, still uh, remain uh, sh shut down. Now, in the West, wildlife markets are often called the wildlife wet markets because if now, if you know slaughter takes place, now uh, you know most uh, Westerners and Western media do not know that there is also another group of uh, markets in China, which is the live stock market. Now, live stock market in China also some also slaughter you know small live stock animals like a chicken uh, and others uh, on the market. So when China resumed the business and uh, uh, stock uh, live stock markets were reopened. So there is considerable concern in the West. You know, they were asking if China uh, has lifted the ban on uh, the wildlife uh, markets, the wildlife wet markets, that they like to call it, whether China has, you know, lifted uh, you know, trade and consumption ban on wildlife. So I would say there, this is a very benign, I would call it a benign misunderstanding on the part of the Western media, but I cannot rule out the possibility that some people in the West are trying to politicize it. Uh, you know the opening, you know, of the businesses, and uh, you know, making, you know, taking advantage of a COVID-19 uh, pandemic in China. Well, Peter, you know, China has implemented policies to uh, replace these uh, street farmers' markets with supermarkets. You know, Carrefour and uh, Walmart came to mind, uh, and also grocery shopping through mobile phones are huge in China. Uh, is it only inevitable that these? Uh, Chinese street farmers markets will phase out and be replaced. I have to say that uh, uh, in the interest of uh, uh, the safety and the public health of 1.4 billion Chinese people, I believe you know uh, livestock markets like the one we see where uh, live animals are slaughtered should be phased out, if not immediately, but should be a phased out in a you know a phased approach, so that this market would be gone. You know, after all. Uh, majority of the Chinese people do not rely on these, you know, markets like the, uh, you know, livestock wet markets for, you know, chicken and duck meat and rabbit meat. Most of people go to supermarkets and other regular markets where uh, these animals are already slaughtered and are frozen. Now, there are some people, I would say small number of people, mostly older, you know, over the 60, because they still remember older times they went to these markets to get the warm meat have the chicken slaughtered for them. But I would say in the interest of uh, public safety, uh, public health, and also for the protection of uh, minor 
And I remember you said that when you were little, you went to this market with your grandma, right? So for young children, witnessing you know livestock slaughter is a traumatic you know experience. It should be you know eventually you know uh, faced out. All right, uh, I want to go to my colleague. Um Xin over there in Wuhan. Xin, you have been reporting across the city. Uh, how would you describe how you see and uh, how you feel? I mean, uh, to what extent has this city come back to life? Yeah. Well, let me add one point which uh, I think is important to understand as to the urgency of reopening these markets. The city was under lockdown for 76 days. The lockdown was only lifted on the 8th of April, two weeks ago. As you could, uh, if maybe you remember, maybe you don't, one of the meat sellers, he had his shop closed for four months. He had, I don't know whether he was able to make a living during these four months, but definitely he was not happy about it. But, you know, because of the COVID, because of COVID-19, he didn't really have a choice. And his, sh his shop was only open for a day or two when I talked to him. So remember all of these millions of people, I would say, all over China, even you know, more than that, to have their livelihood depending on that. So it's not going to be overnight to innovate, to, to renovate, to upgrade these systems. And I agree with Peter that uh, although some of the culture is probably still attractive, uh, attractive it has to be upgraded so that uh, people, uh, w there's no, absolutely no health risk to people. Uh, I also went to this uh, chicken seller, poultry seller, and I asked him whether there is any live poultry to be bought there, and his answer was a very clear no. So I believe enough measures are being taken to uh, make sure that uh, no risks will be posed to people's health in the future. Uh, as to my feeling covering the city uh, for the past week, I think there is a profound sense of uh, wakening up, of getting things back to normal slowly. Just earlier today, I see traffic jam, something people are really happy about. That means the, people, the city is coming back to life. But, you know, there, there will be a very important transitional period. What to do to improve to plug mm -hmm. all the holes that were exposed during this epidemic, whether the shortage... Shin, you know what? I hate to interrupt you, and I hate to interrupt you even more on your own show, but markets, whether that, I'm afraid that's all the time consume. I have. We yeah. have. Um, thank you so very much for your wonderful reporting. Uh, keep up the great job. I also I want to thank uh, our colleague uh, Peter J. Lee from Houston, and that would do it for this edition of The Point. I'm Wang Guan, sitting in for Liu Xin, who has been reporting in Wuhan. Thank you so much, and good night.